It's Saturday morning and you know what that means. Another week for another chiller's tip. And this time we're going to be reviewing some of the basic process that we need to take in order for us to um, create and model one of the characters that we're going to be showing in this little short um, animation that we have right here. Okay, so what's the basics? The basics is we're going to start by sculpting it and then we're going to go through the complete entire process. This has not this has not been done before and I think it's very um, useful for this years since in 2020 we have different tutorials spread all over the internet but not really uh, concentrated on a single workflow uh, regarding 3D production. So you can see all the points that we're going to be touching in this series. I'm going to make this a playlist so we can start off right off by sculpting and Right here we have a face and a reference. This face, as you can see, was created by a bigger sphere and then a smaller sphere that is being used with a mirror modifier to simulate the um, roundness of the eyes. So it's very important that you always work with reference and right here I'm just going without any kind of pictures of kids because otherwise YouTube will mark this as a kids video so that that's why I'm not using any kids reference but on my um, how can we say this on my anatomy classes okay we understand how the, the human body grows uh, boys girls woman men old men old woman etc so what I'm doing right here is I'm going to join the ears, which are a separate object, with the head using a boolean modifier union, okay? And then I'm going to go into edit mode, I'm going to delete the other half, now I'm going to grab this ear, I'm going to use the mirror modifier, and now I'm going to enter edit mode again, and if any change I make in edit mode, it will be automatically reflected onto the other sides on the other side, I'm sorry, since I'm using a mirror modifier. And now I see this is okay, but now I have a problem. I need to join the head with the ears. And in order for me to do that, I have two possibilities. The first one is that I use a um, subdivision modifier, or the second one is to remesh this entire thing so both uh, densities of the mesh will be unified. That is what we understand to be equalized. All right. So if you press remesh with a very, very, very low setting or voxel size, you're going to get this humongous, monstrous um, quantity of vertices. But we don't want that. And here comes a handy feature uh, such as the history stack for undos. That way you can directly jump into one point of a time. These are like flags in other systems where you can just, you know, jump back in time. So now we're going to go back and now I'm going to show you why if you are going to um, use the remesh, you have a, a very special handy tool which is the picker. And you can also try different voxel sizes to see what fits your needs. But in my case, I'm going to type 0 0.03, and that will get me some sort of nice results. This remeshing operation not only can be done while you're in sculpt mode, you can also do it by the object's properties here on the remesh tab. Okay, it works exactly the same way. So right now, the ears and the head have been united. You can read all of the descriptions of the video and pause so that you can know what I'm doing because I know that I'm commenting and the video is going kind of fast but you can play it back at 1.5 0 0.75 um, speed anyways we have the sharp increases tool which is an amazing tool now of course you're gonna get this jagged lines or jagged pixels or jagged mesh because it's it's it doesn't have enough resolution so in this case I will advise you not to use the subdivision modifier because then you will get, as we said before, a humongous mesh. But if you go here um, to the modifiers tab and then you add a multi-res modifier, watch what happens. Your resolution can be subdivided by clicking on this button which says subdivide. And that is great because this way it means that you can have as many different levels for subdivision while sculpting 
a different level subdivision for the viewport and then a different uh, subdivision level for renders, okay? Uh, think of it as a stack layering subdivision system, much like voxels in 3D code or, you know, the, us the usual way by uh, um, layering levels, I think it's called on ZBrush. Anyways, you can do that also uh, adding the multi-res modifier here in Blender. And then you can take your tools, just like we said before, and you can also change the curve type, which is very important when you're working with your brushes. So you can have flat surfaces selecting a flat curve. Okay, it's, it's kind of uh, opposite, but you get the idea. The falloff will dictate how well your, your uh, vertices are going to be pushed or inflated in this case. I'm using a scrap um, brush to um, model his uh, front lips. Okay, so now we're also going to check out how the mask tool works. As you can see right here, just like I mentioned before, you can put pause on the video and go through the, through the menus slowly, but it is a very important fact that whenever you're sculpting, you can isolate your elements so that you don't affect others. So masking is pretty important whenever you're sculpting. And this one just pushes the uh, boundaries from one side of the other when, um, for the different stroke that you're creating. Okay, so it's like, I don't know, it's like creasing but in a soft way. Anyways, we're going to create the hair because we're using this reference and we want to create a hair as messy as possible and as fluffy as possible, such in the case of this Cupid, all right? So we're going to enter edit mode. I'm going to use the mirror modifier, just like we mentioned before. And with the previous techniques learned, we're going to shift D, duplicate, while well, have everything selected. And you will notice that they are both joining and of course, if you continue to move everything, you'll think about the intersecting geometry. Now, how do we deal with that? We're going to deal with that in just a second. So let's just first accommodate these shapes into the hair, I'm sorry, into the head to create the hair. And it is obvious that what we're going to do here is to unite or join using the Boolean again. Now. Whenever I, I give live workshops, I tend to tell people to work with the simplest um, geometry shapes that they can in order for us to be using the Boolean tool in the simplest way and without errors. So that's why we are starting off with a single um, sphere, entering edit mode and then duplicating it in edit mode. Why is that? Because we want to reparameterize the, the geometry, which means that all your quads will get along well and they will not be intersecting with weird angles and stuff. Uh, we want to make this as clean as possible because this is going to be the mesh, the base mesh for our sculpting uh, methods and also because later on we're going to uh, create retopology for this. So as you can see, whenever you use the Boolean tool, everything inside of the faces, inside of the objects, get trimmed, and this is good. So now look, we're going to use Remesh again, and as you can see, this value is too, too, um, too big. Now let's go for something just a little bit small. If you just notice, I used the picker, and then I went to the top of the head. The picker gave me the exact number of the resolution of the head. I could have used that in order for me to unite the or equalize the entire surface of the hair, but I did not. I'm using a lower number than the one that the picker gave me in order for us to uh, sculpt and smooth these uh, crevices that we have right here for the hair because we, we, don't, we don't want a spiky hair, kind of a sonic hair. Well, if you like it, that's good. But in our case, we're going for something soft, for something fluffy, um, and that's what we want to create on the hair. So again, I'm using the, the this tool, this brush, which will allow me to uh, join or rather create sharp edges 
um, concentrated edges or lines as I draw the stroke. And that's exactly what I want because I like this stylized look, kind of a, a hard hair, Fortnite hair. I really like it. Okay, I'm using some of the tools, like you can see here, a lot of bloat, um, inflate, I'm sorry, a lot of inflate. And now we're going to use the snake hook. Every time I see someone using this tool online, it's always to create freaking horns, and I really freaking hate it. It's not for horns only, people, it's for hair. You're going to use the uh, snake hook tool to create strands of hair. Not only that, the twist tool. No one ever, ever on the internet, entire net, from all out of the out of the all tutorials I've seen, no one uses to do it for hair or at least an ice cream. No, they don't. I, that's weird because basically you have every single brush here to create a very stylized hair, and I really like the the way it's going to be. Um, in the end okay so just keep on watching this and you can see that right here we have our basic uh, fluff um, how do you call this um, this part of the front hair <laughs> which is kind of like an ice cream but it is meant to simulate you know those um, uh, grease uh, 50s movies hair you get the idea all right, let's make the eyebrows, and for that we're going to create vertex, a vertex, a single vertex, ver vertex right here. And you probably don't have this menu activated. You need to go to the add-ons and then extra mesh tools. That's how they are called, and then you will get an extra single mesh option to create it right from Shift A, and then create single mesh. To that we're going to apply the mirror modifier and also the skin modifier. And you're going to go into edit mode, and then you're going to press Ctrl A to scale it because it's just too big. If you use the scale tool, it will not work. You need to press Ctrl A. Now you press E to continue extruding. Immediately after pressing E, you're going to go into grab mode, or rather move mode. So you can press E and then start to move immediately. Some of the advantages of modeling in Blender that I really love. All right, so I'm accelerating the video because this is just uh, common practice. You, you know how to model a, an eye. And of course, this is using a mirror modifier as well. So anything I do from one side is going to get reflected on a second side. I also applied a, a quick map here for painting the, the, the head. I just want to get uh, the, the feel that this is some sort of character. And right now I'm creating a single plane because I'm going to draw or rather create the eyebrows. This is another thing I've always seen um, people doing, artists doing in the internet. They basically uh, create uh, some kind of a uh, flat uh, shape, but I like to use first a single vertex which I can then extrude and after that I use a solidify um, and a mirror modifier and that way whatever I do on one side it's gonna get reflected onto the other side now I'm going to use a loop cut right here because I want to subdivide just as part of the eyelash perfect now I'm going to bend it down it works you can make it as thick as you want of course this is a, a male character so we are, we are not going to make his eyelashes too big but you can go into proportional tool by pressing O and then, you know, uh, if you press G to immediate mode grab or move, then you can twist around or move the vertices. And here is the look and dev. It's looking good, but we need to retopologize this. And since the time is over, the next chapter will show you how to do that. So make sure to subscribe. Don't forget to hit that bell button. Write your comments and questions in the section below and I will see you on the next video about retopologizing this character. Thank you very much.